Okay, last part that we want to do is going the other way around from Cartesian to polar. And actually, I think this is easier, but the harder part is then often finding how to simplify the expression. And you definitely need to know your double angle formula, but you do because I've made a big deal about it. So <laughs> now, uh, the tip is that usually your polar equations need to start with r equals or r squared equals. That's just the standard form that you're going to be aiming for in these kinds of questions. So we've got y squared equals 4x. First of all, what is y squared equals 4x? Um, what kind of graph is y squared equals 4x? What kind of curve would it be? Parabola. It's a parabola, isn't it? It's a parabola, but it's rotated so that it's on its side because the x and y are the other way around. Okay? So all we do is you're going to replace y with r sine theta and square it. So you get r squared sine squared theta. And x is just going to be 4 r cos theta. And I want to simplify this. What can I do to both sides? Divide by r. So I'm going to get rid of the squared and the r. So then I have r equals 4 cos theta over sine squared theta. Cos theta over sine squared theta can simplify to what? Cot theta. Good. So it is 4 cot theta cosec theta. I'm happy with that because we don't have any x or y's in there. We have r as the subject with r equals. And it looks like in the kind of standard form you'd expect to see something, OK? You'd rather see cot theta cosec theta than cos theta cosec squared theta. We like that the cos theta over sine theta has been simplified to a cot theta there. And that's where we can stop with this one that we've got. Everyone got that down? OK. So these ones tend to be a bit easier because it's obvious what the substitution is that you need to do. So we've got x squared minus y squared equals 5. Anyone have any idea what x squared minus y squared equals 5 would look like? Actually, you guys wouldn't because you haven't done FP1. FP1 is what the students previously had done. This is going to be a, I think, and it's like an ellipse, I think. I'm going to plot it afterwards. It's either an ellipse or a hyperbola. But I th it's, it's an ellipse, I think. We'll have a look when we, I'll plot this one in a second. <laughs> okay, so x squared minus y squared equals 5. Just going to sub in. So it's going to be r squared. I don't know why I'm starting to do brackets r squared cos squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta equals 5. Anything you notice that we can do on the left-hand side? And then afterwards, what would you have? Double angle 4. Good. So this is r squared cos squared theta minus sine squared theta equals 5. Cos squared minus sine squared is cos 2 theta. So that's r squared cos 2 theta equals 5. In other words, r squared is equal to 5 over cos 2 theta or instead of doing over cos 2 theta, what's preferable? No, sec. 5 sec 2 theta. No. So I, do you remember I said on that previous page, you want it to be r equals or r squared equals? So we're happy to leave this with an r squared equals for this. Um, I won't put this on Desmos now. OK, but what is this one that I've got here? What, what does this look like if I was to plot this? It's a straight line. So we're now going to try and put a straight line into polar form, which feels kind of stupid to do, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to take a straight line and we're going to write it in polar form. We do actually use this a little bit later on. So we're going to have that y is r sine theta. So we have r sine theta multiplied by root 3 equals r cos theta plus 4, like this. And then I'm going to show you something that I'm not sure you'll necessarily spot, but this can pop up as something that will allow you to make it right it even neater than usual. So I'm going to subtract the r cos theta to one of the sides. 
so that we'll have r sine theta. Yeah, I'm going to factorize r sine theta root 3 minus cos theta equals 4. So in theory, OK, in theory, I could now just say, and I don't want you to write this down, I could say that r is equal to 4 over root 3 sine theta minus cos theta. And I'd be like, great, I found what the equation of the line is. But I want to do more than that, because they will expect you to do more than that for this kind of thing. So I'm going to get rid of this. I don't want to leave it in this way. You have here that the coefficient of sine theta is root 3, and the coefficient of cos theta is 1. I don't know if I want to tell you or not. Could I do something to both of those to get some exact trig values that would pop up? Good. I'm going to divide both of these things by 2 to get some exact trig values. And I'm going to then see if you can spot what might happen next. So I'm just going to pull that root 3 over here. So I'm going to get root 3 over 2 sine theta minus a half cos theta equals 4. And I'm just going to come up here so I've got enough space. Uh, mm, yes. Because I divided both of these by 2. Sorry. You are absolutely correct. I should have divided that by 2 as well. And the reason, you don't, the reason you don't have to divide the r by 2 is because then technically you would have been dividing that side by 4. So we don't need to do that. Um, now, what is root 3 over 2 and a half? For which one? So this is sine theta cos of pi over 6. So this is sine theta cos of pi over 6 minus cos theta What's the half in terms of sine pi over 6? Is equal to 2. Now, I could have written that this one here, instead of it being cos of pi over 6, I could have written it as sine of pi over 3. But then you would have had a sine theta sine pi over 3. And we want the double angle. And we know for, for the addition formula, sorry, we don't want a sine sine at the beginning. We actually would want cos cos or sine cos. You can have it with sine, sine, but you then have to do some negation, and it gets a bit tricky. So I now want to put all of this back together into one single thing. What's it going to be? The sine of theta minus pi over 6, because of the minus that we've got in the middle. Do you remember when we were doing trig, and I was like, you really do need to know these things like off the top of your head. This is why, just because they're constantly appearing. So that we then get that r is equal to 2 cosec theta minus pi over 6, which in a way is kind of cool because the straight line equation of y root 3 equals x plus 4 is really simple, but so is the polar one, which is unexpected, right? We would normally expect polar to be horrible and Cartesian to be nice or vice versa, but here we've got it where it's kind of, it's kind of quite smart. Now, Obviously, there's a little trick here of knowing that you can divide by 2. If they weren't nice numbers, these happen to be nice numbers, what do you think might be different about this final expression that you've got here? What, what, was the, what, what about this last part comes from the fact that there were nice numbers? The argument, this, this minus pi over 6. So these happen to be nice numbers. If they weren't nice numbers, they always could go back into this form, this harmonic form that we've got. But it might not be it might not be this like really pretty number that you've got here. What you could have done at this stage is yeah, you uh, yeah you could th you could have done th essentially what we've done here. This whole process is actually the harmonic identity. Yeah, it would just be it would just be r r uh, subtracting some random number. Like when we do the harmonic identity, it's alpha, right? It could just be the same thing as that, but. Yeah, they're not going to ask you that in core pure because they don't want nasty numbers. They want like fully rounded numbers. So we're going to spend a lot of time now on 5a, trying to do as many of the questions as we can. The first part of 5a is converting between coordinates. The second part is going from polar to Cartesian. The third part is going from Cartesian to polar. I'm going to do this on the whiteboard. Okay.